Algebra 2. This is Chapter 5, Section 8, and we're going to start with Section B, Solving Inequalities Containing Radicals. Um, know that when we're, for right now, the items that are underneath the radical can't be negative. So the first thing we need to set up is that this 4x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0 for us to solve it for now. So let's solve that part. So that's going to be 4x is going to be greater than or equal to 4 when I add 4 to both sides. Right? And then when you divide by 4 on both sides, x has got to be greater than or equal to 1 uh, for us to solve this. So that's the first step. x is going to be greater than or equal to 1. And then the second step is we actually have to solve the equation. So I'm going to get the um, radical by itself by subtracting 2 from both sides. So that means the square root of 4x minus 4 has to be less than or equal to 4. Then you square both sides, so 4x minus 4 has to be less than or equal to 16. After that, you would get the x by itself, so this becomes a, a pre-algebra type problem. So 4x would be less than or equal to 20 when you add 4 to both sides, right? And then you divide by both four sides by 4, so x has to be less than or equal to 5. So your final answer is x has to be greater than or equal to 1, x has to be greater than or equal to 1, and it has to be less than or equal to 5. And you could test lots of points in between there to see if they're true or not. So um, you could test 0 to see if 0 works because 0 is not in there. So I put a 0 in here, so that would be 4 times 0 is 0. Square root of negative 4, you don't know that, so you can't do the problem. So that makes sense. Um, we could also put a 1 in there because a 1 is supposed to work. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 divided, or 4 minus 4 is 0. And 2 plus 0 is, in fact, less than 6. So that's true. Then we can put in, let's say, a 2. So 4 times 2 would be 8. 8 minus 4 is 4, so this whole thing's a 4. So square root of 4 is 2, and 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4 is less than 6, so that works. So you can see where we've tested a few points, and it does, in fact, work out just fine. So let's try another um, problem here. We know that, to start with, that the stuff under the radical, this 3x minus 6, 3x minus 6, has got to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so then solve that part. So you know 3x has got to be greater than or equal to 6. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2. So that's one half of the problem. Then we do the other half. So we need to subtract 4 from both sides. And you get the square root of 3x minus 6 is less than 3. Square both sides, so 3x minus 6 is less than or equal to 9. And then you're going to take and add 6 to both sides, so 3x is less than or equal to 15. Divide by 3 on both sides, so x is less than or equal to 5. And you get here that x has to be greater than 2 or less than 5. And that would be your answer. And again, you could test some points to see if that's true. Let's go through one more example to make sure you've got this. You've got two steps to do. First, make sure that the 2x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. And that's not a very good looking 3. 2x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So 2x has got to be greater than or equal to negative 3. And x has got to be greater than or equal to negative 3 halves. And then you need to solve the whole thing. So you're going to add 4 to both sides. And you get the square root of 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 9. Then you square both sides. So 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 81. Then you subtract 3 from both sides. So 2x is less than or equal to 81 minus 3, which would be 78. Um, and then you divide both sides by 2, so x is less than or equal to 78 divided by 2, which is 39. And so you've got a much larger range of answers here. So x has to be greater than or equal to a negative 3 halves. 
or x has to be less than or equal to 39.